Hi guys, in this tutorial I will show you how to model that chair with the seams and after that I will show you also how to get these wrinkles on the seams with materials. So let's start. I will add a cube, make it editable, press C, delete these polygons. Right click, select loop cut, make a loop cut. Now I can delete these polygons. Now I will move the points to get that chair loop. All right, now let's add the taper. Press shift, add taper. I don't want any curvature. I just want to bend into like that and also i will select my cube and scale it on the x-axis okay pretty enough right click current state the object and delete that one now let's put that object into a subdivision surface press alt select subdivision surface also i will enable my lines so i can see the topology First thing, I will lower the subdivision to 1 and make that editable. Now I will continue to move the points. Alright, I think this is gonna be enough. I will put that object into subdivision surface one more time. Check the mesh. Now let's select all the polygons, right click, select extrude, turn on caps. But before extruding, I am going to enable subdivision surface. Then I will extrude. Uh, that looks good, but if you make your extrusion wrong, don't worry, just select this polygon one more time and they will be already selected. Select normal move and you can change the extrusion anytime you want. So now I will select these middle edges, select bevel, set the subdivision to 1. So this way I will get more flat surface right here. So let's move these like that. All right, now, now let's enable the subdivision. I will set them to one and make them one more time editable. Now I will select these edges. These are gonna be my seams. Just double click on them, then I will bevel them. Okay, after the selection, right click, select bevels, set subdivision 2 because I will select these middle polygon loops. Also, change your offset, offset mode to fixed distance. So you will get these even bevels. I think this is enough. Now I will switch to polygon mode. Go to selection, loop selection. Then select these polygon loops right in the middle. Also, you need to clean these points. To do that, I will use slide tool. Press control and weld these points. Just move them to one another okay now switch to polygon mode let's select the last loop before moving them i will put that object into a subdivision surface one more time 
Now I can select normal move and push these polygons back. Looks good, but I want to add more details right here. So select these like four polygons, enable south view surface and move them back. All right, now I will add an FFT deformer, press shoot and add FFT. So if you got your shape wrong or you want to change it, can you do, do that with the FFT deformer? Like that, just move the points. Let's make that FFT editable. Select object, right click, current state object, delete it one. Also, I find these edges too sharp, so I will select these ones, slide them. Also, these edges on the corner. Okay, looks good, but I want to add more details. Actually, I want to add wrinkles on these seams. Also, I don't want to change my geometry. To do that, I will use bump maps. So let's switch to standard mode. Create a new material. Let's make this warmer color. Put that on the object. After that, I will duplicate that one and put that over. And I will use bump map in this material because I will use an alpha map. So if you put your second material on, on your object and if you add enable add material, it will kind of multiply with bump map. The first thing is let's go to color and add a noise so I can see it in the viewport. I will stretch that UV a noise. Let's make it 1000 to 10. Then I will select my material, change the projection to flat. So that way I can switch to texture mode and rotate this noise. So kind of they will align with its seams. That looks okay. Now let's go back to material. Copy that noise. Then turn that off. Go to bump and paste that over. So now I need to make a mask to, to only get the wrinkles on these seams. To do that, select the object, go to points mode, select these points, then selection, set vertex weight, make it 100%, then say OK. So now I need to make these, make that vertex weight an alpha mask to do that let's go to second material go to alpha in the texture effects vertex map go to vertex map put that vertex weight in here so now we get these wrinkles so the rotation may be a little off so go back to texture mode and rotate them also you can go back to vertex map just click on the vertex map double click your brush will automatically will show up you can press ctrl and unpaint the places that you don't want let's increase the bump map so we can see better let's try to add some more let's paint here but to see that enable lines so let's quickly paint here so the left side is okay but 
if I try to paint the right side of the chair, the wrinkles will be off. So they need to be re rotate. To do that, I need to create another vertex map. So first, let's rename that to one. Then select object. Select these points. Cut selection. Set vertex weight. And rename that to. After that, I will duplicate that material. Press Ctrl and move it. But also, I will need to create another material. So we basically duplicate the tag, but I will replace that new material over that so now I can rotate that also I will change the alpha mat go to second material go to alpha vertex map and put the second one select second material do texture mode and rotate So let's make the last one over here. Make another vertex weight, rename that to three. Duplicate the material tag, make another material and put that over. Vertex map, change it to three. And rotate. Also, we can scale. I will also go to viewport, change the texture size to 2K. So we can see them better. Now let's continue to add more details. Let's add a cube. Put it right here. Also, I will put that cube under my subdivision surface, but I will make this two object one group. Press Alt and G. In the cube settings, I will increase the segments so that I get that kind of pillow. Also, let's put that material. Now let's make the legs. To do that, I will switch to front view. Go to spline, select linear, and I will create a profile. Now I will select spline. Since my center axis is right in the zero in the word coordinates. I can easily use a cloner, press out, select cloner, change mode to radial, we will need four legs, also I need to set radius to zero. Also let's turn that to 45 degrees. I will now add a sweep object, but before that I need to make that cloner one object. To do that, we can use connect object, press out and select connect. So now this is going to be a, like a one spline. Also, let's create a circle. Press alt, select sweep. After that, put that connect object under the circle. Let's scale that circle. You can even move the points of the spline. And we can also exit the spline. Select the last one. Press Ctrl and move. Let's switch to lines mode. So let's decrease that polygon count to one. Then I will select spline, select these points, select chamfer. So it's gonna kind of bevel these points.
let's add a quick detail go to sweep object details i will select these scale points and let's move them down press ctrl i will add a point here and move these up move that point up I think we are done with the shape, but I want to show you something else. Before that, I will add some lights and a plane. I will add a PBR light. Also, let's enable shadows and ambient occlusion. Maybe we don't need occlusion. Also, let's make a quick, quick material for the legs. Make it black. The GGX with Fresnel. So when we see these wrinkles in the viewport, they are good. But when I render them, you will get you will get something else. So you will you may need to recalculate the bump amounts and maps to do that. Select them all, go to bump, bump, and let's make them all 10 persons. You won't see them in the viewport, but you will get them in the render probably. Yes. And as I said, you may need to rescale and position them. Like so. And also, if you don't want to get that sharp edge, go to cube and increase your phone angle. Alright guys, I think this is enough. Hope you liked that. And I'll see you in the next tutorials. Bye.